a little bit of background on uh, ALD. Okay, so AL atomic layer deposition, all right, uh, is mainly used in the thin film fabrication, all right, and is one of the most advanced uh, CVD techniques that enables a continuous miniaturization of semicon chips, all right. So we are talking of about Moore's law, right? And now we are now we are even uh, talking about more than Moore's, right? That means the miniaturization and the scaling of the chips will be a constant features, right? So uh, since the introduction of uh, 45 nanometer ICs, probably in the late 2000, LD has quickly become the desired deposition process uh, due to its uh, excellent uniformity, right? Uh, conformality or the thickness, and last is the surface smoothness. Okay, so these are the three benefits of LD over the conventional CVD process, uh, which makes them desirable. All right. So, and uh, in the LD process, we are talking about customer manipulating a new kind of materials or gases, right? And most of these gases come in the form uh, of a low vapor pressure, or in short, we call it LVP. Right. We'll talk more about LVP and how it affects the LD process in the later slides. Right. So all in all, LD is important in the next generation applications. Uh, we are talking about 3D NAND and also like things like FinFET. Right. So yes, we it's used in a lot of this uh, of this uh, layering technology. So uh, before I go into deep dive into each of these features. So I'll give you a, a summary of the of the benefits of the LD20. Right. First of all, it allows you a total thermal immersibility. Right. The whole uh, wolf can be immersed into the gas box. Second, it allows you to have a good flow consistency across the temperature range. Third, will be the increased flow capacity in a small footprint. Uh, fourth. It has an ultra high cycle life, uh, good for your uptime and also maintenance. And last is the, it is available in uh, two materials, uh, our 316 double melted stainless steel or uh, more at once LI22. So uh, today's LD process, the demand a high temperature in going through the wharf to prevent the low vapor pressure gas or LVP gas from solidifying. All right. So what, what is happening is you want the gas that you want the gas that pass through the the, chain, the wetter areas to to stay in the uh, in the same gassy state. All right. You don't want it to solidify. How we are going to do it? Uh, let's let me show you some something in the next slide. All right, so these two diagrams show you two different rolls with the same temperature profile. All right, so on your left is a current diaphragm based ALD wolf in the market, and on the right is our ALD20 wolf. Right, so let's go to the left first. All right, in the current market, right. Uh, what you do is basically the gas which is heated up, they need to pass through the valve, all right? But as you can see, the valve in the yellow region and the green region it is not in the sink in terms of the temperature, all right? And if this happens, it might cool down the gas and you become a solid, right? So you don't want the the, the LVP gas to stick to the surface of the of the wetter areas. Hence, what they do is you need to thermally isolate the the, the actuator, all right. So what you usually do is you have this process called thermal isolation, all right. So they will thermally isolate the the area over here using a stem in a housing, all right. So they will speed up the actuator and the body of the valve, all right. So in order not to affect the temperature of the inside the actuator, right? Because actuator they usually we use a pneumatic air to to pump in the stem, right? So that's why they use this uh, additional stem and housing to separate the body and the actuator, right? Even though with this uh, this situation, right, we still have uh, issue. Uh, 
Uh, let me let me show you. Right. So, so on the on the right side is the IR profile diagram of the same uh, wall that that we see just now. All right. You can see the uh, the area around here. All right. So you can see there's a, a slightly yellowish, uh, all the way to do orange and uh, and uh, red color over here. All right. So even though the gas is flowing from here to here, you still can see there's a overlapping of heat zones. All right. And this situation will, will uh, motivate the condition of solidifying, all right? This is what we don't want to, the gas to happen. That's why this is not a good way using a thermal isolator, right? Then let's move to the right LD20 IR diagram, right? If you can see here, everything is in red color. That means all the parts and components within the LD20 are in the same uh, temperature range, right? In other words, you can put the whole LD20 into the gas box itself, right? As compared to the current uh, steps where you need to you know, separate the actuator outside from the gas box, right? As though not to influence the heat into the actuator, right? So this is what we call total thermal immersibility. So the next features is about flow consistency, all right? So what is important about flow consistency? Because the gas need to be inserted through the, the, the wetted areas in a high temperature, right? That means we need to reach thermal stability. We also need to ensure a high flow rate uh, going through the, the wharf and ensuring a minimum pressure drop across the across the channel all right and the output we hope to achieve flow consistency over here these charts show you the pressure drop versus flow of two different temperatures one at 20 degrees celsius and the other at 200 degrees celsius right for two different types of valve our LD20 and a diaphragm valve in a market, right? The diaphragm valve come in a quarter inch and a three egg, right? So over here, we want I want to show you that as the flow rate was is increased across the range, right? You can see the pressure drop across the LD valve in two versions, uh, 1.2 and 1.7 CV. They maintain it within two tall, right? Two tall is basically a very low bar, right? So uh, you can see there's a consistency, right? Across the wall, you only drop it about uh, maximum two tall, right? As compared to the diaphragm wall over here, right? You start uh, losing, uh, experiencing a high pressure drop above the 600 uh, standard cubic per minute, cubic cm per minute, right? This is for 0.6. And for 0 0.3 is even worse, probably it reached only about 200 SCCM, right? That is only happening at uh, 20 degrees Celsius, all right? If we go to the right diagram, to the right chart, right? At 200 degrees Celsius, the LD20, they still exhibit a very good uh, consist consistency of output uh, post the uh, outside the wall, exiting the wall, right? You can see here, they still maintain a good uh, a good uh, flow rate, right, at 1,002, right, and uh, 1,004 for maximum, right. We try to minimize the differential pressure in the wharf into at the, uh, ideally at the two tall, right. Whereas for the other wharf, we, the, only the three egg version uh, can achieve uh, a, a sustainable flow rate, right. That is also start to lose their uh, their efficiency at uh, 400 SCCM, all right? As compared to here, is 600, but at 200 degrees, it's only about 400 SCCM, right? Okay, so the third point is the flow capacity, right? 
just now I already uh, shared a bit about the CV, right? Well, uh, what's our CV for the LD20? Uh, first, it comes in the 1.2 CV, right? Throw coefficient for our 1.5 inch with, uh, LD wolf. And uh, for those uh, slightly larger at 1.75 inch, it has a CV of 1.7 CV. Okay, so a conventional LD wolf maximum 0.7 or 0.6. Right now is 2x and 3x. 